face. This is <laughs> my last session. Um, before I start, uh, this session RSS, if you're familiar with RSS, you've been using RSS, I'm probably not going to tell you anything you don't know. Um, if you've been adding RSS blocks to your courses and you're using RSS readers, um, this is an introductory level session. So if you need to like step up and walk out now because you know everything there is to know, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just went, yeah, yeah. Because I realized there wasn't a description in the book, so. And if you have a laptop and you want to follow along, this is a great session to play and follow along with because you can add your own RSS feeds to your own course. And I will walk through the process and, you know, you can definitely, I'll go at a pace that you can do this with me. So my last session was like overstuffed with information. This one is probably going to be, probably going to be okay. I'll pause just a minute and let you open up laptops if you'd like. All right, as you get settled in, um, introductions first. My name is Michelle Moore. I'm the director of training for RemoteLearner.net. Remote Learner, Learner is a Moodle partner company in the US. Um, I've been working for Remote Learner for, I think it's two, almost two and a half years now. And I've been using Moodle for oh, almost four and a half years. I found Moodle as I was working on my master's degree in instructional design and technology. I'm looking for open source solutions for learning management systems. Before I started Moodling, or as I was starting to Moodle, I was a middle school math teacher in Kansas in the US and taught middle school math for nine years, so that's my background. Um, in the last couple of years, I've worked with a variety of organizations ranging from um, community colleges, universities, K-12 schools, businesses, you name it, you know, people are using Moodle in all kinds of places and uh, I've traveled all over the US and now to Europe um, to, to work with Moodle and to work with people using Moodle. So, um, experience with Moodle so far. How many of you are just in the exploration stages of Moodle? Like, just adopting or just learning about it? No one, okay. How many of you have been using Moodle for six months or less? I've got some mixed, yeah, okay. And uh, six months to a year? A year to two years? Okay, we've got some experienced Moodlers here. Um, and uh, two to three. And more than three. All right. <laughs> cool, okay. Um, so, RSS and Moodle. This is really going to be a web-based presentation, so I've got the intro slide, and then we'll jump right online to do the rest. How many of you are familiar with RSS at all? Like, you know what RSS means? Okay, so tell me about what you know. What does RSS mean? Somebody really asked. Simple syndication. Really simple syndication. That's what I know. Okay, really simple syndication. Um, when I first learned about RSS or started hearing talk of it, I didn't get it. It took me a long time to figure out the significance and why it was cool. Um, so beyond really simple syndication, what does that mean? How does it function? What does it do for you? It's uh, pull technology. People pull the information they want. Yeah, pull in and the information that they want. And how is, why is that significant? How is that different than everything else on the web? It's portable between different platforms. Portable between different platforms. Okay. Up to date and current. Up to date and current. You don't have to look for it. It's there. It's there. It finds you. It finds yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. For me, that was the big thing. Like that's what I that's what I got. Um, so as an example, for those of you who may be new to RSS and haven't haven't used it much, um, RSS is like it, let's say I hop online every morning. Every morning I like to read the local newspaper. So I'd go to wichita.eagle.com and I'd read the newspaper and that sort of stuff. And then uh, Richard here has a blog. He has a wonderful blog. I read it every day. I'm supposing he has a blog. Um, I read it every day. So I type in his blog webpage and I go and read his blog. Some days he writes, some days he doesn't. Uh, but I go there anyway, just in case. And then um, there's a great journal on uh, instructional design and technology. And I like to read it as they update articles. So. In this old process, the old way of doing things, I spend time every morning going and checking all the places. You know, it's like going and knocking on every door and saying, do you have anything new for me today? With RSS, like you guys said, it brings the information to you. So I don't have to go out and check to see if Richard has new information on his blog or if there's new information in the journals. It comes to me. When you talk about RSS and Moodle, the way these ties together, there are two ways, really. 
One way is about getting information out of Moodle to you so that you can follow what's going on and, and use RSS readers and get information out of Moodle into your space. The other way is to use RSS to bring content into your Moodle courses. And this is where a lot of teachers get excited um, and a lot of teachers first foray into RSS. You know, they're not ready for their own reader yet, but bringing it into their Moodle course is pretty cool. So, how many of you have an RSS reader? You're using an RSS reader? Some, okay. What RSS reader are you using? Um, I use Outlook. Outlook? Yeah, Outlook has a reader. Hey, what about you? I use Google. Google has a reader. Anyone using anything different? Sharp Reader. Sharp Reader, okay. And is that just an RSS reader? Yep. Okay, what else? Blog Lines. Blog Lines, yep. Other readers? I use one called Owl. Owl? Owl. I've heard of that one, yep. Okay. I, I have an RSS reader in Yahoo, in my Yahoo mail. I have a Thunderbird for my email that has an RSS reader. I hear that the new version of Windows um, has an RSS reader built in. Um, a lot of different places you can do the RSS reader. And so some are computer-based, some are, are web-based. How many of you have never seen an RSS reader? You don't know what I'm talking about. You all have. Okay, cool. And you know how to add feeds to your RSS reader. How many of you are subscribing to things from... Moodle in your RSS reader. Okay, what are you subscribing to? Uh, to my forums. The forum. To keep track of. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what would you define as the advantage of, of subscribing to the forums via RSS over via email? Uh, <laughs> I suppose, yeah, I, I don't know, I like it there in that box. I manage a lot of Moodles with a lot of different discussion forums, so it seems quicker to me than email, although I do get email notifications as well. Yeah, yeah. Other opinions, thoughts on that? I'm just curious. Yeah. I guess it's easier with email if it's going to be a big lot of body text, mm -hmm. whereas RSS is good for just the, the, the site news, yeah, you know, the headlines mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I think one thing I like about the RSS is that the, the messages kind of process themselves, you know, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. go away. And in my email, I have to yeah. actually manually go in and delete them and remove mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah. So, um, okay, so what else can you subscribe to via RSS in Moodle? Oh, sorry, no, I was just, just thinking what RSS, oh, RSS but just thinking photos and other stuff. Okay. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there are a ton of sites that are RSS enabled now. Okay. So, other features in Moodle that you're aware of that you can, are, that you can subscribe to? Oh, there are quite a few, actually. Um, you can subscribe to uh, the databases. So if I go to uh, Moodle.org, for example, and I look at uh, the modules and plugins database. You know, it's RSS enabled, so I can find out what information has come into the database, what new additions there have been, that information can come out to me. Um, the forums. Oh, I forgot my list. Yeah, there are a number of different features. Um, how many of you are using the RSS blocks? You are. Cool. That's where I want to go next. Let's do the RSS blocks because a lot of you are familiar with the RSS reader components. Um, and it seems, yeah. So let's go a new direction. So I'm going to bounce over here to a demo course that we were working on in my last session. And we're going to add an RSS block. I'm going to turn editing on. And so if you're following along on your computer and you can go into a Moodle course and play, then um, you want to turn your editing on so I can add blocks. So I'm going to blocks, add remote RSS feeds. I'm ready to edit the block or configure the block. And ready to add a feed. So before I can actually configure the block to say which feeds I want, I need to manage the feeds first. So I'm going to click on the tab that says manage all my feeds. And I have a ton on here already. As an administrator, 
and I want a newsfeed URL. Now, when I'm working with a lot of people who aren't familiar with RSS, you guys are an advanced audience, I'd say, um, some people try to type in things like uh, CNN.com, and, you know, I'm going to get a feed from CNN as news, the changes, right? should work. Uh, so you really have to walk people through the process. Well, it, it doesn't work. You just type in any URL. You have to go out and find one. So how about, let's see, some of you are subscribing to things already. So let's find one that you're already using. What's a news feed that you're already subscribing to? Where can I go get that? BBC. 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 Dot, is it .com? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was gonna guess. Soon it will be. Yeah, will it? Co.uk. Oh, .co.uk. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Stupid question. What's the .co for? What's the .co? Company. For? Company. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. So. So if you put forward slash news on it, it will take you to the news page. Ah, take you to the news page. Uh, Which has got a slightly different address, but it switches mm -hmm. in. Cool. Okay. As I look at a, at a page and. I talk about some of this not because I think you don't know, but when I'm talking to new users about Moodle and I'm training people how to do this, these are the things I hit. So maybe for those of you who are going to have to go back and train other people or you're working with other people, key points. So as I'm looking at my browser, I can tell that this page somewhere is RSS enabled because of the icon in the top. And I talk to people about, you know, look for the orange block that says RSS or look for the orange block that says XML. Those are all indicators that the page is RSS enabled. Um, and we also talk about the fact that the content's dynamic and it changes. If it, the content stays the same every day, then it's probably not going to be RSS enabled. So you said, if I go to news, then I get a slightly different focus, and I can subscribe. So that orange square pops right out at me. There's news feeds here. And this page, or this, this process here, the web part of the process, is always very interesting to do in a lab <coughs> setting with many teachers trying to, you know, figure out how to do this. Because some pages on the internet are really nice and easy in terms of how the RSS works. Others, not so much so. So I've got my fingers crossed that this one is going to be a nice easy one that will work really well. Um, let's see, subscribe to this feed using... I don't want any of those. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, see, this one's different than most of them. See, I just want the URL. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. So, I type in the URL. Occasionally, I'll validate the feed if I'm not sure, if I'm feeling a little insecure. But I found that some pages won't validate, and they'll still work anyway. So I try a lot, try on there. So I'm going to say, add the feed. News feed is added. Very good. Now I'll go configure this block and add this feed to this block. <laughs> BBC News front page. There we go. All right. So, um, display each link's description. So, if I display the link's description, then what I get is you know, a paragraph or a short summary of what is in the article or the information. This is really dependent on where the feed is coming from, what is displayed. You don't have a lot of control. So, again, I do a lot of trial and error on these. I like to include the description because it's usually enough to hook people. You know, get them to go in and read this. Max number of entries to show per block. When I do the description, I usually knock down the number of entries because otherwise that block can get really long. Next, I choose the feeds I want to make available on this block. And I can pick more than one. So I can do my BBC News, but I can also do um, Weblog Ed. My personal preference, if I'm going to do more than one feed, I like to do more than one block. If you incorporate two feeds in the same block, it's kind of tough to tell, you know, where one starts and the other, where it ends and the other begins. Title. So you can define your own title for the block. Should a link to the original site be displayed? I usually say yes because that way if the students want to go and explore more, get more information, they can. 
And then I also like the channel image. The channel image would be like the logo, the graphic that relates to the site. And again, this comes from the site. Some sites will give you a big logo. It doesn't work so well in the space that you have allowed for the block. Um, so again, trial and error. We'll see what happens. And I save changes. Shows up, bottom right hand side. So the logo fits in there very nicely. There are my articles, there are my information. And I click on the article title and it takes me to the page. My only complaint about the links to the RSS, and I've had that other teachers talk to me about this, maybe one of you know a solution, um, is it loads in the same window. So the student loses their place. That's the only downside. No, it always so opens in a new window. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe that's because you're using Firefox. In IE, it opens in a new window, and in this latest version of Moodle, it didn't for a while. Uh -huh. uh, and that was a and then it that did. we got fixed. Yeah. So it does in IE, definitely. Cool, okay. I'll have to open it up in IE and see <laughs> how that works. All right, so let's do another one. Another block that, another RSS block that I like to do is to get a custom feed from Google or Yahoo or so I can really customize the information. All right, so to create my own custom feed, I can basically decide whatever topic, whatever news information I want to bring into my feed in my course. <clears throat> so I'm going to click on news so I can get to the news page. And we'll do a search for articles with a key um, certain topic. Where do you want to go? What do you want to find information about? Find news information on Moodle. Moodle, there we go. All right, so if I search the news, it pulls up all the articles that mention Moodle. And again, when I'm working with teachers, I say, well, scan this list. Is this the kind of stuff that you're looking for? Is this what you wanted to want in your course? So it looks good to me. There aren't a lot of things that will talk about Moodle that won't be Moodle related. Um, and then, I'm ready to subscribe. So there's a link that says RSS. So Google doesn't follow the rules. There's no orange rectangle, no signifier. Um, so I can just click on RSS. And I can grab that URL. This is functioning differently than I used to. add this one into the block. Now I wouldn't generally recommend putting two big blocks in the same course. Um, I'll usually do one block that maybe just does titles if I'm going to do more than one. But I try to keep it, keep it short. I get the Google News. So, value in this for your courses. What can you do with this that really enhances the value of your course? Or what are you doing with the blocks that enhances the RSS block? What we found is what we described as accidental learning. So, for example, on a science site, you put a link to New Scientist. Our kids wouldn't normally read New Scientist, but when they see a stunning headline, they do. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're reading things they wouldn't otherwise read, and that's been a really useful part. Yeah, that's exactly the experience that I found. Um, when I was teaching, we had our district website, and we had an RSS feed um, about special education. And Yes, I had special education students in my classroom, but it wasn't something I would go and seek out information about on the internet. But just as you described, I would see a headline, catch my attention, and I'd go and read things. 
So, and you can customize these, change these as often as you'd like. You know, maybe next week I know we're doing a unit on uh, cells in science. And so I do some research, find a feed that talks about you know, new research, new developments in, in cell studies, and I put that in there. I can build all those ahead of time and hide them. You know, it's one of the cases where I'd actually hide a block instead of deleting it. Build them ahead of time, and then as the time comes, I just reveal the certain blocks at a certain time. Um, so it's a great way to get current information, current news, current current things into your course. Promote the accidental learning. I like that phrase. Um, and expose the student, students to things that they may not be exposed to, whether they fit directly into your course content or not. <coughs> other other comments, ideas. Tell me what else you were hoping to achieve in this session. Because like I said, you guys are much more advanced than most groups that I work with in dealing with RSS. So we moved pretty quickly. Could you say there were other elements of Moodle? I, I, if I want an RSS feed from my Moodle, yes. I've only ever used it with forums. What else can I use it with? Which other? Let's do this. I'm going to go home. And I'm going to look to be sure. Um, a couple of things you have to do, if you want to enable RSS feeds on your forums or enable feeds from the site, there are several different settings. So uh, I love the search box on the new admin menu. I can, I can just search for RSS so I don't remember exactly where the setting is. But you have to make sure to enable RSS feeds. That's one of the first things you have to do in order to be able to send feeds out, right? Um, then you also have to take a look at activity by activity level there are settings on each activity. So let's say, I know the database is RSS enabled, right? If I go to the settings on the database, then the only setting here on this one is just enable RSS feeds. And so now with this turned on and I say yes, when I go to create a database, I'll have an option to make it RSS enabled. So there's one feature that has the RSS functionality. And uh, I'm trying to think. The forum, obviously, um, because you're using that, you've seen that. The glossary, I checked on the, I was hesitating on this one. The glossary is RSS enabled, so if you get new entries there in the glossary, you can RSS enable those. You can follow that. Anything where you're really getting new content, new information. Um, I've had people ask about having the Wikibe RSS enabled. That would be a way cool feature so you could know when things were being updated and added. Some Wiki tools have that capability, but um, unfortunately not yet here. Um, so really, the glossary, the database, and the forum are the big ones that allow you to do RSS enabled, enabled content. Um, And we'll take a look here and see what kind of information we get out of this. So this would be a feed from a database. I'm not missing anything. Can I just uh, mention one, one way we've used um, RSS? One of the things we found, some of the Moodles we run are professional development sites, subject-based networks. Uh, and people were posting useful links that were sort of getting lost in the forums. Uh. Uh, and what we've done is set up uh, a Delicious. Are people familiar with Delicious, the social mm -hmm. bookmarking site? Mm -hmm. uh, and we've set up a Delicious that's for our 14 to 19 partnership uh, and then tagged to different uh, subjects. And we're looking at the diplomas, so we've got a creative and media tag, an engineering tag, and so on. 
and you can take RSS feeds from delicious pages mm -hmm. and we've put those on the relevant Moodle sites. So it's just a quick way for people to see new links that are being uh, added because mm -hmm. within Moodle itself when people post useful websites it sort of gets lost the less you yeah. search forums. And I think that's been a really useful little partnership between uh, Delicious and Moodle and using the RSS capabilities of both. That's cool. That's cool. I had a question for her. Sure, that's okay. Uh, so would that be um, another example similar to the customizing the Google thing? Do you want me to show you what yeah, that would be that great. Sure, come on. Yeah. Useful. My other question was, um, I haven't used RSS to be the last week in our forum, so if you can talk about some of the value in that. Say that again. I'm sorry. I have not used RSS either with glossary or forum. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk about that. Sorry, I can't work out your touch pad here. Oh, <laughs> the very it's basics. The, yeah. Ah, it. on here? Oh, yes. Right. Sweet. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to struggle with this. Can I just ask you to type the sure. URL in? Yeah. For me? Voice activated computing? No, no, no. It's VLE. Yeah. Dot. Okay. Dot Pathfinder. Dot Clear. Dot Dot Clear. Like that? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. And just. Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you just open a new tab for me and just do sure. it this second? Yeah. Uh, and if we just put in another URL, which is creative. Oh, sorry, VLE. Oh, VLE. Okay. Dot creative. Dot Cumbria. Cumbria. C U U M B R I N. Dot clear. Dot net. Dot All right. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Can we go to the back and then? Nice. Okay. So this is our um, our team site, and we just get we've got a fourteen to nineteen delicious that I use. Now, actually, one of the problems I encountered with it is I have my own delicious, <laughs> and I thought I was logged into that, and I put how to create standard futures on there, and I can't get it off, although I do get off the delicious. So you've got different accounts, you've got to be careful. But what I'm trying to do there is to encourage our users uh, to, to be aware of the new things I've put up there. And I link to the source site so they can see the 14 to 19 delicious. So this is for the whole team, uh, but can you just jump to that creative yes. media? Uh, we're starting to implement the new diplomas, um, and so what I've done here, I haven't used the RSS, and perhaps I should, I'm using my RSS here for arts news and creative and media related stuff, uh, but there's a creative, a link to a creative and media tag in there, now if you just click on that, I'll show people, uh, sorry not that, see the, this, this link here, oh yes, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Delicious, <coughs> But these are sites I've added that attack creative and media. Mm -hmm. And if we just come down the page, where's your page now? Uh, you'll see at the bottom there is an RSS feed just for that page. So you can take a feed for the whole site, which is all the stuff you're adding. Mm -hmm. Or if you want particular uh, aspects, you know, just the URL for creative and media. And this for staff development has proved really popular. Because uh, people are spending a long time looking for sites and think as well as that one you mentioned. So that link for us between uh, Delicious and its RSS capability in Moodle has been a really useful quick win. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Delicious is awesome. It's very cool. <laughs> okay. Other questions, comments related to that before we go on to her other question? <laughs> My idea was to use the, uh, a glossary for this or to use a database for it because uh, we had also the discussion about privacy problems uh, with the information that students are giving in the course and if they give, give to take this uh, information to delicious and uh, we call that form of delicious we have some privacy problems right and you know, what we're putting yeah these are <coughs> links for for teachers at the moment and okay. there have been some concerns about yeah. privacy uh, and rss actually one of the things as a team we use we use google apps Mm -hmm. um, and so on the Google desktop we could put links to uh, forum postings and we were quite alarmed that anybody who wasn't logged in could see those. So right. there is a problem if you put links from your forum out to a public RSS reader uh, that we came across. Now apparently again that's a bug that's being fixed I think within Moodle. 
um, because when I questioned it, they said it was something that they were going to look at. So I think it's a known issue, uh, mm -hmm. because for us working in the school sector, that is a concern. And we actually took that block off our Google Apps site, because we didn't want anybody to see what was was posted there. Mm. So you're right, you've reminded me that was a problem. We don't see it as as much of a problem with um, delicious because that 40, that is a Cumbria 14 to 19 delicious. Uh, and so we're not an individual, we're a team. Uh, and this, um, the teachers and members of our team can add to this delicious. So this is just a resource for 14 to 19 related information. Now, there are concerns, um, I wanted to use social bookmarking in school with students for projects, and there were concerns then that, uh, because it's an open site, somebody could try and network with a youngster and get them to their site and eventually make contact with them. So we were concerned about that. But um, on the other hand, our youngsters are using social bookmarking, social networking, and so uh, my approach would be that uh, it's an educational issue and something we just need to teach safe behaviours in, as with everything else. But that is hard to get past the schools because they feel yeah. uh, an accountability and responsibility. So we're using this with teachers at the moment. This is a professional networking site. Yeah, yeah. And depending on your purpose, though, um, that's what I promote to a lot of people, is use the database of the glossary, as you suggested. For if, if it's just a list of links, obviously you get other things out of Delicious that you can't yeah. get out of oh, a database. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll see teachers, you know, they'll have a web page resource yeah. that has 27 links on it. But we needed a, a web links resource that was open, that wasn't password protected. Right. What um, our users are increasingly being frustrated with is having to log into more than one site. They want yeah. it all in one place, or not password protected. So we've had to think about what needs to be password protected mm -hmm. and what can be open. Yeah, yeah. Does Delicious, I haven't used it enough to know, um, does Delicious let you write a little summary yeah. of what the, yeah. yeah. I generally haven't because I'm lazy, but there is a notes <laughs> box um, right. that you can add to. And that is quite useful. What I tend yeah. to do is edit the title so mm -hmm. that it's self-explanatory, just so I don't have to type too much. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Other comments related to this? All right, thank you for sharing that with us. That's always the best part of the conference is not really the presentations, the other stuff that goes on. Um, so let's take a look then at you know how an RSS feed from a forum or a glossary might be useful to you, not only as the instructor, but for your students as well. Is that, am I interpreting your question correctly? Okay. Um, first of all, general comment, um, when you, I find in the U.S. that uh, there are a lot of people that don't quite get RSS, they're not understanding it yet, they're not using it, they're not utilizing it, um, but even so, I think it's a very good idea, a cool idea to enable your forums with RSS capabilities and give people that option because the people that are using it will realize it and they'll look at it and they'll think you're really cool and on top of things and you got it going on. Um, it's a good resource for them to make use of. Um, so whether you use it or not, it's useful to think about enabling <coughs> your forms uh, that way. And again, the reason I, I like the feeds coming in via RSS um, for a couple of reasons. Let's do, let's go back here. Um, I have enough stuff coming into my inbox anyway, into my email. Uh, so if I subscribe via RSS, information comes there, it's separated, it processes itself, it's taken care of. The RSS has some of the same advantages of, that you get when you subscribe to a discussion forum, and that instead of having to go to the Moodle site every day to check and see you know, what's happening, information comes to you. So you get some of those advantages. Um, but some people like to just have it in a separate place. <coughs> so let's look at what a feed looks like coming out of a forum. Let's go to, let's see, there's a lot of people online. General problems. That one usually has some good activity. All right, so this forum is RSS enabled. has the orange, rec or the orange square right up here in the corner. 
I'll grab that feed. I don't think I already have it in here. Ah. Let's try that again. Well, it works like a piece of cake, let me tell you. Uh, let me try another one. The other trick is that, you know, what you get out of the feed, in my experience, is highly dependent on your reader. You know, on, on some feeds it seems, or in some of my readers, it seems like it shows subject lines, and others I get more content. Um, it is also somewhat dependent on the program. There we go. Okay, comparison to advocacy. So now, if I want to follow this form, instead of going to the Moodle site to figure out what's happening in the comparisons form, I can just scroll down the list this way. Do you subscribe to the discussion forums via email from Moodle.org or from Moodle sites now? No. I, and different people function in different ways. Like, I really like not having to go to the Moodle site every day and trying to figure out what, what's new, where it's at, and that sort of thing. Um, and I subscribe to a daily digest. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I know how to use the RSS reader. In truth, I still get the form post via email. But, um, so I get the daily digest, and I can do a quick scan and see what's happening in Moodle.org and stay on top of information and activity there without having to go to the site every day. And I don't have to get the emails one at a time. Nice, condensed version for me. Same thing is true, uh, you know, in the courses that I teach. I can see quickly and easily what's happened in the course during the day, um, and if I have, you know, special concerns start of the course, I'll get my messages one at a time. So as people make a post 30 minutes later, it comes to me via email. So I don't have to leave my Moodle course open all the time. I don't have to check it continuously. But the students feel very, um, if you can respond quickly to their questions, which you can if you're getting them via email and you're checking that often. Um, it's very attentive, you know, to the students and very responsible, um, helping them out. Yeah. So if you wanted to reply to one of those, you would have to then log in to Moodle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just like you would if you're getting them via email. Yeah. You know, if I'm getting them via email, I click reply, it takes me to Moodle. So if I click on this, it's going to be to take me out to Moodle. And I was already logged in so that it didn't dump me through the login page. That, that would that would be a slight disadvantage if you... If you so allowed your students to subscribe to RSS to do that. I think it might discourage conversation because they wouldn't bother to go in and do that. They would just read other people's things without contributing. Yeah. They do that. With I've the heard the reverse anyway, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've heard the reverse though too. Um, you know, if you have students who are slightly disengaged, um, yeah. then happening. they're getting, yeah, they see other people are doing stuff, there's stuff going on, they know what's happening. Even if, because it takes an extra special effort to go to the site and look for stuff, <coughs> but if it's coming, and I'm already reading my blogs and that sort of stuff, it's one of And you've got that live link to get straight there. Right, yeah, yeah. if they feel really encouraged to respond. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I have heard there are some sites that turn off the RSS capabilities and the email capabilities, because they want to make sure that students are logging in every day. But I, you know, that would drive me nuts. So, you know, I don't make me go there every day, because some days I won't. Yeah, but if it comes to me this way. Another advantage that your comment made me think of is sometimes you'll get students when they get the um, form post via email, they hit reply on their email, and with the RSS feed, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I'm going to teach them how to do the RSS feed. So, that's what, it, that's what it looks like coming out of a form. Um, I had the database in here. So out of the database, this looks like, are you familiar with this database? So is this making any sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So this is just an entry in the database. Um, I don't know if there's a glossary at Moodle.org that's enabled or not. Glossary of common terms. Here we go. And I'll show you what that looks like. So it's really, it's really about empowering your students, empowering you, you know, giving yourself options. 
looks like they don't have this one enabled. So my guess is though it would look very similar to the database one. Other questions, comments? All right. Have a great day and thank you very much for coming. Thank you.